Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. Everybody. Welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to our beautiful Lotus Amira. And today we're going to be providing you with an ownership update. And that ownership update is going to revolve mostly around how things are progressing with regards to the three key issues that exist with our Lotus Amira. I'll also tack on some additional issues that I've noted while we've been driving the car as well towards the end of the video. So make sure you stay watching to pick up on those items. I purchased our Lotus Amira from Safwat Cars in Southend on Sea with three key issues. And just to walk you through what those three key issues were again, if you haven't seen those, then check out the previous content. It's cracked windscreen coming down to where the rear view mirror is. I um, won't go into detail on that. Again, watch our previous videos for full details. The resistor needs replacing on the air conditioning system because it's either full on or full off. And also we have this paintwork bubbling issue on the rear tailgate section whereby there's a reaction between the co composite materials that Lotus have used to build these body panels and the paintwork itself. So it ends up with bubbling issues. So we've got some bubbling around this rear tailgate. Other cars have been affected with it on the doors. Ours is localised just to the rear tailgate, thankfully. Now we've been trying to resolve these issues. When I say we, I mean me and the South End on Sea dealership Safwak Cars. When I agreed to purchase the car, it was purchased on the basis that these three issues would be signed off by Lotus as being agreed to be repaired under warranty. And that was the case. And I, I purchased it on that basis. No issues whatsoever with Safwak cars. They've been really golden in, in all this situation. They're really pushing hard with Lotus to try and get this resolved. So the car was assessed by a local South End on Sea dealership around six weeks ago and they signed off the three issues under warranty and said yes that will be covered under warranty no problems whatsoever. Then I agreed to purchase the car and now we need to get the, that assessment transferred to my local Bristol, de Bristol dealership and therein lies the problem. We've had major issues communicating with um, the dealership transferring the information over to Lotus and then it being transferred again to my local Brist Bristol dealership. It's just an absolute nightmare. And the car's fantastic. It's communicating with Lotus. That's the friggin' issue. And this was all the problems that I had before. Flicking, flipping Lotus, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> so where we're at the moment is we've been communicating with the local South End on Sea dealership They've transferred, apparently, the assessment over to Lotus to be able to be transferred over to the Bristol dealership. But it hasn't been transferred over correctly or there's been some sort of miscommunication because what was transferred over was that those three items, but with regards to the paint issues, it was the doors. So this car was down as having to have the doors replaced. Now, we have our own thoughts as to why it came through, you know, as an insurance claim for the doors needing to be replaced. They're quite costly. But anyway, you know, I won't speculate too much on that side of things. So it came through with misinformation. So that would cause problems in itself. And then the people we were dealing with, there was two contacts we had at Lotus Direct. And those two contacts suddenly went quiet. And these two contacts were very good. And we, we searched them out and we kept with those two contacts. But suddenly they went really, really quiet and ghosted us. We chased and chased and chased. Then finally Lotus Direct got back to us and said, oh, one of those people is no longer with us anymore. Yet they didn't feel the need to tell us that beforehand and just decided to stop communicating. And one of those people has been like transferred internally or some weird stuff's gone on. And then they said, oh, by the way, the car needs to be reassessed at your local dealership. We can't transfer assessments between dealerships. So they've totally done a 180 on what they told us, which is a friggin' nightmare. Again, Lotus, not the car, friggin' Lotus. So we're now at a situation where 
The South End on Sea dealership, Safwat Cars, has been pressuring them again. He's gone back to them and said, look, this isn't acceptable. This has been signed off already, has been assessed and, and been needed to be repaired under warranty. So please, can you make sure that is what happens and that goes forward without the car having to be reassessed again at my local dealership, because that just adds additional latency. So that's where we are at the moment. We're currently at this situation where Lotus isn't communicating very well with us. And when they do, they change their stories all the time. Where have we heard all that before? <laughs> and like I say again, to those who think that I was berating the car, I'm not. We've bought the car. I love the flipping car. The car's fantastic. We've been having great times with this car. We've put around 1,200 miles, 1,200 to 1,500 miles on this car now and loved every minute of it. Yes, we have this issue with regards to the frigging air conditioning. It's a bit fun in some ways, but you know, turning air conditioning up and it goes full blast or we turn it down and it turns off. But you know, that's this issue and it will be resolved eventually, I'm sure. But getting the information transferred internally within Lotus is just frigging hell, a flipping nightmare. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give the video a like. It's very, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, please think about subscribing. There's no motivation for people to subscribe anymore to YouTube channels. It's very, very important to move us forward, guys, that you subscribe. Thank you very much. Now back to the video. Now to talk you through these additional items that I've noticed that are wrong with our particular car and these aren't already added to this warranty claim issue. So firstly, there's an issue with the electronic parking brake or hill hold. I know that hill hold implements the same electronic parking brake system. For some reason, when you're stopped, 99% of the time it's absolutely fine, but on the rare occasion, but on rare one occasions, the hill hold or the parking brake, the electronic parking brake won't release. And it just stalls the car because it literally will not release. You try and pull away and it just will not release. That's clearly a bug. I think that's a firmware bug. And I'm hoping that when the car goes in to have its warranty issues resolved, that they will put a new firmware on it or they'll check to see if it needs a new firmware and they'll update the firmware because I'm pretty sure that's a software issue. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. Now, the second item is this SOS. This SOS system in effect is whereby the system has this integrated security or safety system whereby if you have an accident, then it calls certain services to make them aware that you've had an accident and so they can come out and help you, of course. You've also got an SOS button on the roof, so you can call them manually yourself as well. And it also causes out the emergency services, you know, so it's in effect, it's linked to the emergency services. The perception is, the perception is, even though we're not told, it looks like the infotainment system has an integrated SIM, whether it's an electronic SIM, a software SIM, or an actual physical chip SIM, but it seems to have an integrated SIM and it will communicate on certain basis to, the, to a certain network, to the Lotus network or to the emergency services network. When you have the car parked for any period of time and it cannot see what it's trying to communicate with, or when you haven't driven the car for a period of time, then you get a dashboard warning error light for the SOS system. Now I know a lot of you are seeing that error. I've done some research on this, and there seems to be two reasons why this SOS warning light comes on. It's a pain in the backside, I know. Firstly, it would seem to be that if the car cannot, is, isn't outside and can't see whatever it's trying to communicate with, because it's perceived it's a, it's a SIM, so it must be GSM, or is it Wi-Fi? I don't know, but it must be GSM. It then comes up with this error. Or, and, so possibly both, that when the car hasn't been used for a while, the backup battery, which is a five volt backup battery for the SOS system, 
needs charging up it hasn't been charged therefore it shows a warning light and the only way to back to the, and the only way to charge that battery up is to take the car out and drive it it isn't charged up with the car being on a battery tender that does not charge up that five volt backup battery for the SOS system you have to physically take the car out and it has to be driven it's charged up when it's driven so that tells me that it's charged directly from the alternator for some reason. So the alternator has to be pushing a charge out and it's interconnected with that, with that voltage that's coming from the alternator um, to that five volt battery, which charges up that backup battery for the SOS system. So that's the second issue that we've got. We've also had an issue, which I alluded to in one of my other videos, um, which may have dropped now or it may not have with regards to helping you on a workshop video, the first workshop video for a car, helping you with items such as how to disconnect the battery if you need to and how to connect an OBD2 reader to the OBD2 port on these Lotus mirrors to be able to read and scan codes. And that is, we've noticed that, or this came up with a check engine light for the air intake temperature. Now, I know that this could have been a, a connectivity problem with the sensor, which is connected to the engine. It came up with the warning light on my dashboard and I disconnected the battery to try and resolve it and that didn't resolve it. And I've got an OBD2 reader, so I connected the OBD2 reader to the car and I was able to remove the code and able to clean out the code um, from the ECU system. So that removed the check engine light from being on the dashboard and it hasn't come back again since then. And I know that's a glitch that you guys have seen as well. So that workshop issue is gonna help a lot of you with regards to how you can connect an OBD2 reader to the car to be able to clear out certain codes of that nature. And also, you know, some of those codes can be reset by, by disconnecting the battery. And I've shown you how to do that in that previous video as well. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because we've got a plethora of additional Lotus content coming with workshop videos. And this is going to be very helpful for you going forwards with your Lotus Amira ownership.